We want to read from these passages of Scripture. St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 36 through 38. St. John, chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. We're glad to see Brother Timothy Shanks. Amen. I'm thankful that God's angels wouldn't let the enemy take you out. God's still got some more for you to do. We, we appreciate you. St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 36th through the 38th verses. But when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. St. John chapter 5 verse 17 but Jesus answered them my father worketh hitherto and I work. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 14 through 17. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then were all dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. Amen. Behold, all things are become new. You may be seated. For the sake of emphasis, Matthew chapter 9 Verse 38, pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into his harvest. John 5, 17, but Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto and I work. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we that thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no men after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him 
no more. Let us reason together for a few moments from this subject hitherto and henceforth critical strategies for the harvest season. Hitherto and henceforth critical strategies for the harvest season. We repeat that after me, hitherto and henceforth, critical strategies for the harvest season. Thanks be to God for this day that the Lord has entrusted to us with the vision of servant leadership in his kingdom. For our trajectory of servant leadership is one that is punctuated with the miraculous hand of God upon our lives. The fact that we are here this morning is nothing less than a miracle. For as we end this ecclesiastical year, we remember that we began this ecclesiastical year outside on the grounds praising God on the parking lot and sidewalk and streets. And that is why the term hitherto is so significant because hitherto means that God has been blessing us up until this present moment. I know it's a King James term, it's an old English phrase that we don't use often, but every now and then it's good to go back and get the old and integrate it with the new. Because hitherto means that we connect our legacy, our history with our present and our future. Because you really can't have henceforth, which means from this moment going forward, unless somebody was with you to get you to this moment. There are a lot of henceforth people that act like they don't have any past. Nothing ever happened to them until now. They act like they've always had it going on. They don't talk about their struggles, their issues, the battles that God has given them grace to overcome. Some people act like they've never been sick. They've never been talked about. They've never been hurt. They've never been through a storm. But in my hitherto, I have to thank God that he rebuked death to keep me alive. Thank God that from all the days of my past unto this present time, God has been with me. The song says, all my life, God's been good to me. Amen. Can you help me praise God for that? Hitherto means that we must give an account of what we have done in the past that had an impact upon where we are right now. For your present is the sum total of the decisions and actions that you have made in the past that have had influence upon your life's journey. And in order for you to be here now means you had to do something right. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, yes. You wouldn't be here in this heavenly place looking the way you are praising God for what he's not only doing but for what he's getting ready to do in your life. You've done something right. <laughs> you know, there are some people that have come up to you and ask you, What's wrong with you? 
But you can almost count on one hand how many times people have come up to you and say, what's right with you? You don't have to say, man, just say, hmm. It is as though we are programmed to look for people's issues and dirty laundry and their problem. We seem to need something that we can use on people to snatch them down or marginalize them. That's how we sell newspapers. That's how we get ratings for reality shows. You got to find something negative and bad on people. But God says, I see something good in you. I have faith in you. In you I believe in you you've done something right why don't you look at somebody and tell them you've done something right can you imagine how Job would have felt when he was sick when he was down when he had to have ten funerals at one time when he suddenly went from being a multimillionaire to a pauper, can you imagine how he would have felt if his friends had come to him and said, Job, you've done something right. But they could only find fault with him. They told him, you must have messed up or God wouldn't have went off on you like that. They didn't know what had happened in the background that a court case was held. And in that court case that no human being had access to, Satan accused Job falsely. Because he said to God, if you let me touch him, I guarantee you he'll curse you to your face. That never did happen. Out of all God took Job through, he maintained his integrity. He honored God. He served God. He continued to worship God. Satan made an accusation against Job. And I don't think you any different than Job. Satan makes accusations against you. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. He's always talking about what you can't get right. He's always talking about where you drop the ball. He's always talking about your deficiency and insufficiency. You don't even look right. You, you ever had somebody to come to you and you know you was looking good and they said, well, let me get that ravel off you. You got some hanging down. They don't have enough grace to admit that you are uh, attractive, you're looking good. They just got to let you know, I still see something wrong with you. Let me help you out. Didn't even say good morning. I want to get that ravel off you. You got a moat right there. Jesus even said, how can you see a moat in your brother's eye? And you didn't notice that you had a beam. That's something bigger than a two by four sticking out of your head. God gives us grace to enhance people's lives, to edify them, to encourage them, to let them know life is still worth living. And I know that that means God is with us because we came through the ringer this week. We had a funeral here on Friday that was absolutely gut-wrenching. As we began to give God glory for the life of Sister Elaine J. King, God had to help us to deal with a senseless tragedy and murder that happened to one of us. We had to come to grips with the fact that even though you were saved, you lived and an evil and wicked world and even though you love God you are not exempt from trouble for Jesus said one's own foes or enemies are in their own household. It takes a God to help you to bounce back from tragedy. It takes a God to help you to pick up the broken pieces of your dreams and say I'm going to press forward into the future. That's why hitherto means something. You have to pay a price to get here this morning. Don't you know hitherto means that I'm not holding any grudges. I have no enemies to punish, no friends to reward. I just have a heart full of gratitude and thanks. I don't have enough room in my life to carry around 
bitterness and anger and strife because it's a poison that hurts you more than anybody else. As we go into this new year, why don't you forgive some people? Forgive some folk that will never come to you and say, I'm sorry. Forgive some people that will never beg you pardon. Forgive some people that tried to hurt you and take you out. Don't even worry about them. The Bible said, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thy envious against the workers of iniquity because God will soon cut them down like the grass. He did say that if you trust in the Lord, verily you shall be fed. In fact, he went on to testify about his hitherto and said, I've been young, but God let me get old. Amen. I know I don't have nobody old this morning, but he, he testified for himself. I used to be young, but God let me get old. But I got a testimony. I never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging great. Come on, help me give God some praise today. Hitherto means God is the one that got me here. Yes, especially in as much as we came through a pandemic, a million people have died. Practically half of the general board of the Church of God in Christ was affected by this pandemic. Even I did the homegoing celebration for Bishop Thomas, a general board member of the Church of God. And I'm not even a jurisdictional bishop. I'm certainly not a member of the general board. What was I doing preaching a general board member's funeral? Well, I didn't know what I was getting into because this was before vaccinations. This was before we were getting shots. And uh, at that time, the son of Bishop Thomas, who is now the successor to his father, Bishop Mark Thomas, uh, said, you know, I can't get our general board members to agree to come to my father's funeral. And I can't get any jurisdiction of bishops to come, but he said to me, you are my class president. And I just wondered if you would help me to honor my father's legacy. And I had all kind of people giving me free advice. I wouldn't go down there because you know they, they got this situation with COVID. But I remember the Bible saying, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Hitherto, God has been good to us. And that is why Jesus, as he addressed the harvest, had to deal with this critical issue of a labor shortage. It's not just in the church. It's all over the world. There are businesses that have signs. As soon as you walk up, positions are available. Apply within or apply online. Why are there so many jobs available? Because there are some people that are tired of working. You know, some folk don't like work anyway. Hello? That's right. Everybody don't like to work. Getting up all early in the morning, getting in traffic jams, dealing with road rage to get to a job. And when you get there, you're dealing with people who are hostile and impatient, unkind. Work is more than a notion. Uh, but... You know, the Bible says, if a man won't work, don't let him eat. Now, that's some very serious medicine right there because ain't no man got no business having a, a weight problem and you ain't even got a job. You ought to at least want to work, look for a job, act like volunteer somewhere, make yourself useful. If a man won't work, don't feed him. I don't think I'm going to get nobody to shout on that. You going to help me out, Brother Organist? You, you, <laughs> it might be a little hard to chew this meat this morning. 
This ministry is about work. When you say ministry, you just said work. When you say servant leader, you just said work. When you say elder or evangelist or missionary or chaplain or usher, you just said work. Jesus said the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers, the workers, are free. I need to talk about these different kind of laborers because I know you haven't forgotten that movie called Gone with the Wind. You remember that? Oh yeah, it's a long time ago. I believe it was 1939, but it's still one of the most popular movies in American history. And somewhere in that movie, uh, there was some uh, African Americans. Uh, they weren't called that at the time. Uh, but they said to Miss Scarlett, Miss Scarlett, we don't know nothing about milking no cows. They said, Miss Scarlett, we are house. Yeah, you, you know what they was getting ready to say. So, and so I want you to know, we ain't talking about house workers. We talking about field workers. You never would have had a civil rights movement if you didn't have some field workers. You never would have thrown off the yoke of oppression and Jim Crow if you didn't have some field workers. You wouldn't even have Church of God in Christ if you didn't have some field workers. And I want to thank God that even though we own cushioned pews this morning and wall the wall carpet, we are still field workers. Let me hear somebody say, I'm a field worker. Jesus said, go out into the highways and hedges because that's where the souls are. Go into the streets and lanes of the city, compel them to come. The apostle James says that we should minister even to the fatherless and orphans and widows because that's feel work. I know it's more glamorous to be a house Negro, but I believe we can impact more people's lives if we work behind the scenes, if we feed the hungry, if we shelter the homeless, if we clothe the naked. That's what you call a field worker. Come on, help me give God some praise for field workers. Jesus says, look out on the harvest. The harvest is plenteous, but I have a critical labor shortage. I got members, but not laborers. There's a difference between being a member and a laborer. I'm talking about good members. Yeah, dressed up members bourgeois, middle-class, educated members, but don't ask them to do nothing. <laughs> and I'd better give you some advice when benediction time comes, because if you don't move out of some of these folk way, I mean, when that they believe benediction means get out of here as fast as you can before somebody asks you to do something. That's not what benediction means. Benediction means empowered to go forth and do the work. It's ascending forth into the fields. Benediction doesn't mean see you next Sunday. <laughs> I wish I had some help up in here today. That's really where you get your hints forth from because the benediction says from now on God is empowering you. He's anointing you. He's encouraging you. You came through the ring last week, but the benediction means you can make it another week. You can make it another day. You can go through another trial. God was with you. God will keep you. Hitherto and henceforth. You understand, in order to reap this harvest, we must address some critical issues. The harvest 
is much more challenging now than it has ever been before because we must deal with a generational shift in attitudes. We have callous hearted people now. We have young people that have never seen the Bible in their house. Never heard our father who art in heaven. Know nothing about the Lord is my shepherd. Have never heard a curse song, a church song. Have seen their families, their parents cursing day in and day out. They've seen shooting and killing. Whenever you grow up in the face of violence, broken glass, buildings that are abandoned, Philadelphia has hundreds of abandoned factories that are just standing there. The mayor's saying nothing about it. People that could invest in tearing these buildings down and putting up affordable housing, they're saying nothing about that, yet they want to be mayor. They want to be on the council. But you got to address problems. You got to address issues, not just political expediency. You got to deal with what's hurting us, what's breaking our hearts, what's killing our children. We have members but we need laborers. That is why the Lord has placed upon us this mantra of servant leadership. Jesus, the Bible says, was in the form of God, but he chose to be a servant, which really means bond slave. It means he doesn't throw his title around. He doesn't throw his position around. He's not trying to impress people with what he has, but rather by his love. Jesus wanted you to know I love you before he wanted you to know I'm the king of kings or lord of lord. What mattered to Jesus most was not his position but his calling, his ministry, his outreach. Jesus loved folk that hated him. He loved folk that nailed him in his hands and feet. He loved people that called him a wine bibber, a Beelzebub and a prince of devil. Anytime you can love people that hate you, God's got to be in your life. The hand of God is upon you, and don't you let anybody make you think God has left you alone. Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always. That means even if you stumble, I'm with you to pick you up. If you make a mistake, I'm with you to help you get back on the right track. If you fail, I'm with you to help you to succeed next time. If you don't have what it takes to shine, I'm with you to polish you and shape you and teach you and groom you until you are jewel in the hand of God. I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm with you always. Why don't you encourage somebody and tell them God is still with you. You may have to cry sometime, but he's still with you. You might get hit, but he won't let any weapon destroy you. You might get disappointed, but God will renew your hope. He's still with you. As long as I know God is with me, I can move forward into ministry. For me, it's personal anyway because I started on the other side of scratch. You know, some folks started with something, but the Lord gave me a start on the other side of scratch. You ever heard I made this cake from scratch, but sometimes you don't even have scratch. In fact, from scratch means at least you got some Tinex Confectioner's sugar. Scratch means at least you had some swan down flour. Scratch means at least you looked in the cupboard and found some clabber girl or some lemon and vanilla extract. But on the other side of scratch means you don't even have a cupboard. You don't even have a bowl to mix a cake in. On 
the other side of scratch means that you've been called out of your name and that people said you would never be anything. But God wants you to know I'll bring you from the other side of scratch. I know some folk don't know nothing about that. Why don't you look at somebody and ask them, have you ever been on the other side of scratch? You see, we riding around in European import cars, but I remember when we had nothing to ride in. I know what it means to ask somebody, would you mind taking us home after service? And it's a strange feeling when people drive up in shiny automobiles, but they want to get out of there before you ask them, can you drop me off at the bus stop? Or at the subway. Mm. Hitherto means God brought you from the other side of scratch. And that means you got to trust God when you have nothing. You got to trust God with pains in your body. You got to believe in God when all you've ever known is oppression and abuse. But even then, God says, I am with you. You see, I didn't like it at the time, but I'm glad God let me grow up in poverty. I did not come from a bourgeois family. That's why I started preaching in a brush harbor on 12th Street in Louisville, Kentucky, directly across the street from a beer tavern. My ministry began on the other side of scratch. And that's why I can't stand up here and act like I ain't never been through nothing. I'm not a part of the group that acts like they've been rocking this thing all the time. No, it was, it was tough for me because as a boy preacher, many times I was unwelcome in the pulpit. I was told God didn't call you anyway. You too young to preach. And all the folk that told me that now, they dead. They can't say nothing now because they're not around. The people that were trying to keep me out, they act like they didn't even want me to be in the church because a calling was on my life. And that's one reason why I'll never fight women in ministry. Because when I was barred from the pulpit, I had to sit out there among the women. The men were sitting in the pulpit with their legs crossed. The women were out there praying, leading the service. And the women said, honey, God is going to bless you. God is going to keep you. God is going to take you. You just be encouraged. I've never had a woman to tell me God didn't call you to preach. I've never had a woman to tell me, you too young to preach. It was the women that put their arms around me and said, it's all right to cry, young man. God has a blessing. I wonder we give the women a hand in here today. Thank you, women, for encouraging my life. You see, when God has a calling on you, you have to make your calling and election sure, which means you might have to cry sometimes. You might have to get lonely sometimes. Friends may leave you alone, but stay with God. God will bring you out. Hitherto, God's been good to me. Hitherto, God has opened doors for me. Hitherto, God has fed me when I was hungry. Hitherto, God has binded up 
my broken heart. I want to thank the Lord for valleys in my life. I want to thank the Lord for haters. I want to thank the Lord for doors shut in my face. I want to thank the Lord for potholes and for bridges that were out. I want to thank God for people that said you never make it. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Keep on praying. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on shouting. Shout when you don't have a dime in your pocket. Shout with pains in your body. Shout when you've been hurt and left alone. The joy of the Lord is your strength. After all, the things I've been through, I still have joy. Happy with Jesus alone. Happy holes in my shoes. Happy with a raggedy car. But if you stay with him, God will bring you out. Come on, help me give God some praise. Hitherto, God has been good to me. Jesus Jesus said, my father worketh hitherto, which means my father has been working up until now, but it's my turn, it's my shift. You see, there are 24 hours in a day, three eight-hour shifts, and Jesus was saying, my father pulled his shift because he made the world and after he made the heavens and the earth he blessed the seventh day he hallowed it and rested from his labor he has a right to sit down there's a throne and God sits in it Jesus said now on my shift I got the graveyard shift I've got to be nailed in my hands I I've got to be nailed to a cross. I've got to be speared in my side. I got the graveyard shift. I got to work while others are sleeping. I've got to work while others are fighting. I've got to go down into hell and preach to the spirits in prison. I've got to preach to the past, preach to the patriarchs, preach to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Sarai. Leah, Rachel, and Rebecca. I got to preach to those who lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. I got to preach to those who were in Nineveh. I got to go down into hell and preach the thousands of years of departed souls and bring them from hitherto to henceforth. I got to preach the gospel to previous dispensation. Catch them up to the past and let them know from now on you have a right to the tree of life from now on there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek there's no difference between male and female there's no difference between black and white there's no difference between circumcision and uncircumcision I just shed my blood I just broke down the middle wall of petition. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Oh, I will give you rest. I came to Jesus just as I was. Weary, worn, sad. Jesus found me on the other side of scratch, found me before I dressed up, found me before I combed my hair, before I took a bath. He found me before I got educated. Hitherto, oh, the Lord been good to me. That's the reason why I sincerely believe grace is retroactive oh Lord I said grace is retroactive 
I know that's a little heavy for you, but let me break it down. Somebody help me say, break it down. Retroactive means grace doesn't just save you from now on, but grace will go back in your past and cancel demons' assignments. Grace will go back in your past and stop generational curses, stop generational diseases. Grace will go back in your past and cancel the hit man that is on your path trying to kill you been trying to kill you all your life but Jesus said I'm gonna put a bloodline between you and the enemy and the devil can't cross that bloodline the blood of Jesus covers my past the blood of Jesus covers my back the blood of Jesus covers my ancestors. I'm so glad nothing from the past can destroy my future. Forgetting those things which are behind, reaching unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark, press into my future, press toward my destiny, oh, I'm pressing, pressing on the upward way, new heights, I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord, Plant my feet on a higher ground. Lord, make me steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Lord, oh Lord, be a fence all around me. Lord, hold my hand while I run this race. I don't want to run this race in vain. Lord, walk with me while I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to hold my hand. I want Jesus to guide my footsteps. Thank you. Somebody help me thank him. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. I want to win souls. I want to help somebody. If I can help somebody, my living will not be in vain. Why don't you touch somebody and tell them, help somebody. Help somebody. You might get talked about, but help somebody. Your feelings might get hurt, but help somebody. You might be misunderstood, but help somebody. Oh, oh help somebody. Oh, Lord, thank you. Come on and help me praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for strength. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. Hallelujah. Come on and clap those hands and give them glory. Hallelujah. 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 This is Bishop J. Lewis Felton thanking you for joining us for the Mount Airy Kingdom Worship Experience. May you continue to partner with us as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. We love you in Jesus' name.